Do something now. Take anomalous action now. Start writing your book now. Start your own YouTube channel now. But Go this video is about you today. This video is about you. This is a big, serious topic. This is a fucking serious video. This is not like... <laughs> Hello, 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 trans surfer and the trans surfing curious. <laughs> My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Trans Surfing TV. So, yeah, I, um, God, you know, <laughs> I am just down here in my little trans surfing lair. Welcome. <laughs> and I, I love, I love this place. It's a small little room. It's in a basement. There's nothing down here. It's just carpeted floors and four white walls and a staircase and my desk and my whiteboard and my thing that I hang up all my clothes on. And I am fucking creating my reality down here. <laughs> and it's amazing. I wrote a book down here. I'm trying to spearhead a movement down here. It's like my it's it's like my my cockpit for <laughs> ascending to some of those higher lifelines. And this is really in my opinion from my layer of reality from my perspective. I think that this is maybe what I could be remembered for is the fact that I took a book that was virtually unheard of and I spread it and I did it on my own. As I've said a number of times lately, I've never faked any of my numbers. I'm not paying for numbers. I'm not, you know, giving into vanity metrics. I um, haven't run any ads. Like this has all been organic, you know, um, gorilla style. <laughs> Just getting in there and getting her done, you know? And it has been the absolute time of my life. It's not that I'm doing this, and this is kind of the interesting part of this experience for me with reality transurfing, and this is the lesson that I want to extend to anyone who may be looking for a new path. A lot of people message me and they're like, oh, thank you so much for doing this. And I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate when someone benefits and finds value in these creations and helps their life and their self and their layer of reality and takes something that I'm saying and uses it to go somewhere and achieve something higher. I'm so happy for all of this. And it is my intention that I help people for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do this without a profound intention to want to see others thrive and succeed. But the reason that I'm really doing this is because I fucking love it. I love it. I love the creativity. I love overcoming my fears on camera. <laughs> Go back and look at my first video. I was scared shitless. I was really just racked with insecurity. I was caught in that maze. I was not knowing what to do, but I pushed through it every day. I've made videos every day. I've done all of these things with no, you know, I've had a couple of people reach out for me to me from LinkedIn and they'd be like, hey, where'd you go to school and what'd you study? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. What, you don't have a background in this or that? Or, you know, where'd you learn to public speak? I'm like, dude, I'm just doing it. Like I haven't learned, I haven't like, there's no education for this, right? And this is the part that I love, turning nothing into something, creating, building, um, doing something that is never done. This, this, this job, for lack of better words, endeavor, it's never done. There's always more. 
there's always people throwing ideas at me. There's always ways in which I can improve. There's always things being, you know, presented to me. You need to upgrade your audio. You need to start doing this. You need to do that. There's always something to be done. And at first, um, my lower self definitely resisted this. My lower self wanted to stay safe. My lower self wanted to stay um, in familiar territory. And then at a certain point, my higher self was like, no, we're not doing that anymore. We want, we want now lower self. We want to go to, to higher territory. And if that means it's a little unstable and you don't know what's going on half the time, you're going to learn and you're going to figure it out and you're going to proceed and you're going to continue to push through and go through those doors and hit the top. Right? So, if I could have it my way, this is what I would be remembered for. And uh, this is going to be the topic of today's video. What do you want to be remembered for? What do you want your life to be about? If you were to die today or tomorrow or 50 years from now, what do you want? What would you want people to say about you? What would you want to leave behind? I've talked about this a few times in past videos that in one of Gurdjieff, G.I. Gurdjieff, who was another Russian mystic, one of his books, he said, at the end of your life, you feel an intense sensation that is the culmination of your entire time on this earth. And it lasts for three or four seconds only. So this really got me to thinking at a certain point and I would say about a year ago, I decided that everything that I was going to do from this point on was going to be for that three or four seconds. That whatever I, however I moved in my life, whatever actions I took, whatever decisions I made, am to make, all of this stuff, it is to feed what I feel will be the final essence that is my last three or four seconds on this planet. And I want it to feel really, really fucking good. I want it to feel bitchin', right? I want it to feel like, I want it to feel like I absolutely killed it. That I came and even though I wasn't given a lot in my early years in life, not educated, not told or asked, hey, Renee, what do you want to do when you grow up? I wasn't nurtured in all of those traditional ways. Um, I took what little I had and I used it to build something a little bit better. And then I used that platform to build something a little bit better. And then I used that platform to build something a little bit better. And I want to have those last few seconds feel like absolute, absolute ecstasy that I did the best that I could, that I did the best that I could. And I lived a lot of years not being true to myself. I was completely ripped apart by pendulums in my life. I was caught in all sorts of vortexes of dysfunction and abuse and drug use and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. And I want to look back and be like, okay, not only did I fucking kill it for myself, but I tried to help others by extending the things that I found that have worked for me. So that's what I want to be remembered for. That's what I want to be remembered for. But this video is about you today. This video is about you. What do you want to be remembered for? What is in line with your soul frail, your individual essence, that little code internally of what makes you a special human being, what does that essence want? And how can that manifest itself or materialize itself in your external world to the extent that you will be remembered for it? So a couple of questions here first, and I don't mean to like, this is a big, serious topic. This is a fucking serious video. This is not light, you know, like, oh, you're just gonna, you know, are you living your soul frail today? No, I'm not. Okay, so I'm gonna start living my soul frail tomorrow. These are big, like, questions that could take you the rest of your life to dial in, just like me. Am I dialed to my soul frail? Yeah. Am I dialed to my soul frail fully? Hell no. I still have got a lot of work to do. I'm a flawed person. I have parts of my 
personality that are still um, connected to standards of pendulums. I'm doing my best to detach, just like Neo in the original Matrix, pulling those things off. But I'll admit, I still have a couple of those, those tubes hooked to me. We all do, right? But I am in, the, in an active state of tuning to my frail. There will always be work to do. But are you, are you on the path to dialing to your soul frail? Are you, are you paying specific attention? And is it your intent to continue to dial to the soul of your frail, even if it challenges the standards of pendulums in your layer of reality to the extent that you gotta make some, you gotta make some calls, right? Do you need to make some calls? Do you need to arrange your life so that you can be tuned or tuned to the soul of your frail a little bit more? Second, have you given in to complacency? Now again, I know this is a serious topic. I'm not trying to just throw these things at you and be like, eh, here you go. You know, this is serious stuff that could take years or decades to truly work through. But like a lot of people, and this is why I created the Anomalous Action Challenge, a lot of people have messaged me over the years doing this that are stuck in complacency mode and they can't get out. And they're like, God, I want something higher and better for myself. I just don't know what I should do, you know? And this is why I made this challenge, the 30 Anomalous Action Challenge. That muscle needs, that action muscle needs to get flexed and needs to strengthen. So when you see something in your world that calls to you, you're not fucking scared to take action. If you hear like, oh, Renee wrote a book, right? But then you say to yourself, well, I couldn't write a book. My life isn't spectacular enough. I don't know how to write. You know what? <laughs> this is like, this is complacency mode. When you feel called to do something big that you could possibly be remembered for, that could be the essence of, the top essence of your entire life, your entire lifespan, your reality, but you stop yourself because that lower nature you tells you that you're not good enough and it's better if you just stay put, right? It's better if you just exist in your layer of reality without thriving. Sorry, guys. This is a topic for me that is very emotional because as I write in my own book, I struggled for so long trying to find any sense of reason to live, self-worth, anything that would help me to feel as though like I wanted to even get out of bed in the morning. You know, I struggled with all of it and I was just living to survive and I was doing very poorly at that. Most of my actions were just to dull the pain of reality let alone seek out some elusive happiness or, you know, um, uh, to succeed at something or to feel good about myself. None of that was even in the equation. So this, the fact that I can stand here today and speak about this is like, talk about reality transurfing. I have transurfed to a version of reality where I can speak about these things now. It's a miracle beyond anything that I've ever experienced. So have you given up to complacency and are you ready, willing, and want to find the ways in which you can be able to do more and become more and rise up and hit some of those higher lifelines connect with that higher version of you, right? God damn, I've been crying a lot during these videos lately. It's really, um, wow. Okay, are you in creator's mode? Um, this is such a huge one. Anytime that anything starts to 
feel funny in my life, any time that I start to feel complacent, <laughs> any time I start to feel as though I'm not pushing through to that next level, any time I feel as though my mirror is showing me something that maybe I don't want to see, am I in creator's mode? Am I creating? Is my higher self giving me actions to take? And are all the other voices and parts of me internally taking the ball and running with it, which is my, cre this is my creator's mode, right? This is my creator's mode. So I fall just like anyone else. My falls are less frequent and um, I pick myself up quicker, more quickly, and I'm able to run with the ball more so, but I am in a constant state of, am I in creator's mode? Am I in creator's mode? Do I see myself? Do I see my reality? Am I in center screen mode? Am I getting sucked into my outer screen? Am I, being, am I living in my inner screen too much? Am I adhering to standards set by pendulums? Or am I continuing to tune to the frail of my soul and maintain creator's mode so I can continue to create my own reality? And big heavy stuff! This is huge, heavy stuff. This is, this is, this is, this is life waiting to, to be lived, right? This is, this is potential, untapped potential that we all have. Are you staying connected to that potential within that you haven't tapped yet? Am I? Right? I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it in front of everyone so I can say, you don't have to know what you're doing. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to go to therapy for 20 years like I did. You don't have to try to sift through the chaos and abuse of your past and like figure it all out to then take a step. Take a step now. Take a step now. Go into creator's mode now. Do something now. Take anomalous action now. Start writing your book now. Start your own YouTube channel now. Go do the thing that you've always wanted to do now. Start, put your foot in the direction of the path of that new profession that you want now. Start creating it now. Start creating it now. And finally, before I wrap this video up, have pendulums got you by the balls? If you are failing at life, if you are not going to be remembered for the things that you would choose to be remembered for, if you are not dialed into your soul frail, if you have given into complacency mode, if you are not into, in, in your creator's mode, this is because pendulums most likely have you by the balls. Pendulums, standards, your layer of reality, your reality rut. You might be um, afraid or shy to take a step outside of yourself or your zone of comfort. And all the pendulums in your life collectively tune in and say, yes, you are right. You should stay exactly where you are because that's what you deserve. That's what you have and anything else is for someone else, not for you, right? But I'm here to tell you that that is a crock of shit and you can do anything if you accept the pendulums that you are in business with that are keeping you confined to your reality rut, keeping you pulled away from your sovereign right as a creator in your creator's mode, keeping you in complacency mode and keeping you tuned away from your frail. When you are tuned away from your frail, you are satisfying pendulums that want to harvest and use your energy to perpetuate their own intentions, not yours. Tuning to your frail is a two-way action. You're dialing in to who you truly are as a person, and at the same time, you are tuning out of the pendulums, keeping you trapped in the matrix two-way action. So what can you do to start 
to live your soul frail more so today. I know a lot of people message me and they're like, Renee, what do I do? I don't know how to tune into my soul frail. I don't know what should I, what, what step that I can take next. I don't know. I'm not you. I don't know anything about you or your soul frail. All I can tell you is start listening deeply within yourself, deeply within. What do you want? What do you really want? And how can you get yourself to an environment, even if it's just staying at home, where you can hear the rustle of the morning stars, listen to it, right? Not just hear it and then be like, oh, well, that would be nice, but my life is the way that it is. I can't do that. Tuning out of the voice that you hear, but actually tuning into it and then taking the ball and starting down that path to that higher version of reality, that version of reality that you have available to you that people will remember you for, that people will remember you for. So let me know your thoughts on this video, everyone. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for allowing me this forum, this place, this platform to be able to connect with my higher self so I can do the things that I feel compelled to do so that three or four seconds at the very end feels really, really fucking good. That's what I'm in for. Peace out, everybody. Bye.